how important is it to give instructions for a task-based activity? If it is that important, how can I do it properly? In this video, I'm going to tell you the importance of giving instructions for a task-based activity. I'm going to compare good and bad ways of giving instructions. And I'm also going to give you some tips on how to make your instructions work. Let's go! Hello exam seekers, I'm Patty and today I'm talking about giving instructions. But before I start this video, please subscribe to this channel and like this video because the information here in this video is going to be very useful. Okay, let's go. In 2011, I went to Canada to study for the TKT. Well, as I've mentioned in my post in my blog, I'll leave the link in the description, check it out. I didn't know I was taking the TKT course. I went to Canada to have the foreign experience and to study for a course and improve my skills and abilities as a teacher, but I didn't know I was taking the TKT prep course. I thought I was only taking a general course for English teachers. But listen to the program description, okay? The objectives of this course are to teach students the fundamentals of TESOL and to prepare students for the Cambridge Teaching Knowledge Test. How could I not know that? <laughs> well, I didn't read the description of the course, that's for sure. Students who take this course will be more confident in presenting and giving instructions and will be given the opportunity to lead ESL activities and observe an ESL class. This means that the first thing I would learn in this course was how to give instructions. Actually, I would learn that and do that throughout the course. Later, when I came back to Brazil and to the schools I used to teach here, I was asked to present a workshop for my peers. Actually, the school asked all the teachers to give workshops for the other teachers and what did I prepare for my peers? Yes, I prepared a workshop on how to give instructions. Today, I'm going to share with you what I've learned about giving instructions, when to give instructions, why to give instructions, how to give instructions and some tips. So let's first talk about when to give instructions. We give instructions at all times. If someone asks us how to do something, we give instructions. If we want people to do something for us, we give instructions. We also use instructions when we try to assemble things. So we read the manual. In our case, as teachers, we have to give instructions before a task-based activity. So an activity goes well and smoothly. Now, let's talk about why to give instructions. I will give you seven reasons for that. One, students will understand it the first time. Two, you won't need to repeat yourself over and over again. Three, you won't need to repeat it individually. Four, you won't waste time. Five, you will avoid misunderstandings. Six, activities will flow. And seven, the students will do exactly what you want them to do. But this is not only in the classroom. This will happen in real life. If you want something to be done and avoid all of the seven problems, just give instructions. Now, let's go to the most important question. Oh wait, first, let me show you two examples, okay? Watch it out. Okay, everybody, I have an activity for you that you're going to love it. It's a little tricky, but I'm sure you're gonna love it after you get the hang of it, okay? So you need a partner. Yeah, it can be someone from your table or anyone else. Yeah, you can do it by yourself, okay? Um, well, these are two pictures. Two for you, two for you, two for you, and two for you. 
Okay. Oh, don't don't start it yet. You don't know what is to be done. So wait, listen, and I will explain. Okay. Uh, so there are two different pictures. Uh, actually, you have to have a partner. You cannot do it by yourself. Yeah, you have to do in pairs. Anyways, where was I? Ah, yes. Uh, there are two different pictures, a fridge and a cupboard. You can choose the best one, you can choose the one you prefer. And you are going to make a list of things you want for dinner. Yeah, you can see below the pictures, there is a recipe, there are some recipes. You can choose the, one, the things that you would like to eat from your pictures and make a list. After you make a list, we are going to put these pictures on the wall and talk about these pictures and talk about the lists if we have time because last exercise we didn't have time. So yeah, that's it. Do you have any questions? Okay, you can start. Okay, in this activity, you need to be in pairs. Pair. Pair, pair, pair. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Oh, you are so hungry today. And A, raise your hands. In this picture, you have a fridge. Can you see a fridge? What is in the fridge? That's it. Now keep it a secret. Don't show it to your partner. That's right. Um, B, you can see a cupboard. Can you see what's in the cupboard? What is in the cupboard? Good. Below, you will see possible recipes. In pairs, speaking, you're going to decide what you're going to eat for dinner. Can you share your piece of paper with your partner? Do you have to write anything? Okay, off you go. Now that you're finished, you can share your picture with your partner and together make a list of the things you want for dinner. After you've finished, you can stick the papers on the wall. Okay? Can you share your pictures with your partners? Yes. What do you have to do now? And after that? Yes. Stick them on the wall. Please start. So which one was the best? First video or second video? Do you understand why? Of course, the second video was the proper one. Because it followed seven simple steps which I'm going to tell you now. So the most important question is how? Step one, give it clear and simple instructions. Do this, do that. Step two, break too long instructions. Instead of saying do this and then do that, do this other thing, break into parts, do this. After a while, now do this. Step three, demonstrate. When a task is too complicated or it's too difficult, instead of just giving the instructions, demonstrate. Look, you're going to do this. Then you demonstrate. Or say, for example, you can do this. Okay? Step four. Ask ICQs or instructions checking questions. Okay, everybody. Is it to color first or to read first? Should you write anything 
or should you write personal answers? Step 5. Ask, do you have questions? Well, this question is a little tricky. Most teachers usually ask this question after they give instructions, which is not done properly. Do this and that. Do you have any questions? And your students, when they are shy, they usually don't say yes. They usually say it's everything okay, I don't have any questions. So avoid this question unless you first ask the ICQs. When the ICQs are clear, you ask, do you have any other questions? Step six, hand out things or say, open your books to page nine. What happens is that some teachers usually give the papers, the tasks, before the instructions are given. And it's important, it is essential that you give your instructions first. If you hand out papers before you give the instructions, students will forget that you exist. Once you give the papers, they are going to start looking at it and they won't pay attention to you. Okay? Step seven, say, please start. Well, the students like when you are polite and if you have an expression when you want them to start, it will become a routine for them. So they will wait every time for that expression, for that word, for that sentence. These were seven practical steps to give instructions properly. Now, let's go for the tips. One important thing to do is getting a student's attention. Always grab your student's attention first. So, everybody, look at me. If you don't have their attention, just forget it. <laughs> Nothing will work. When I say give instructions clear and short, try starting with the main verb, using imperatives. Do this. Listen to this. Write that. Stand up. Sit down. Work in pairs. Work in groups. It keeps your instructions clear, short, and simple. That's it. Speak loud and clear, but also grade your language. So it doesn't matter if you speak loud, but you have students with a lower level and you're speaking difficult language. So you speak loud in a clear way so that everyone understands it, but you keep the students level so that they understand. Show, don't give. As I mentioned, if you give something before explaining, students won't pay attention. Use visuals, use realia, so that his students' attention are grabbed and they focus on you. Remember, ICQs, use either or or questions that they are going to answer one thing or the other. Don't ask ICQs such as, guys, what are you supposed to do now? The students will be like, so ask them, are you going to do this, this or that? Are you going to draw first or write first? Either or questions. Give examples, use gestures, use keywords. By following these steps, I'm sure your classes will be much better. Well, if you use them, please comment in the comment section. I use them. It was great. Or if you have more tips to share with us, please also comment in the comment section. I would love to read your tips and use in my next class. It might be even better than mine. So that's it for today. I hope these tips were useful. If you want some more useful information, please subscribe to this channel and like this video so that I know that this content is relevant for you, okay? I will also leave some information in the description, so check it out. Thanks for watching me and share this video with other teachers. This might be very useful for them, okay? Again, thanks for watching me and see you next time. Oh, don't forget, knowledge is never enough. Bye-bye. In a proper way. Now... This